Gopinath's appearance by King Indodumna's prayer fill our vision with delight and thus dispel our heart's despair. Brimming over with keen rapture are the Lord's eyes full of grace like twin moons arising over the blue-black ocean of his face. Scarlet lips like ruby clusters form his all-attractive smile which can captivate the cosmos and all conflict reconcile. May that self-effulgent Lord, whose pastimes please like countless moons, ever shine within our hearts. What good are any other boons? Good evening, saintly Vaishnavas, having come from far and near to behold Chaitanya Chandra's quincentennial this year. May we bid you all warm welcome to the theater we have now formed so your hearts can all be brightened and enlightened and reformed. No frivolous amusements here, prepared in careless haste, which so commonly offend all those of culture and good taste. No tragic endings dramatized that sober men would cry when they see their favorite heroes cruelly crushed by fate to die. As spring's green buds unfold and bloom, awakening hearts fresh hope. May this drama of devotion sanctify your vision scope. Please entwine your bhakti creepers in the tamal desire tree. Jagannath Priyanatakam commences presently. Here, please let me bring my assistant. Please come in. Master, I am ready, but I fear the others are not. After so many months of rehearsal, you still lack confidence? This drama is totally different from those performed in the past. The parts are extraordinarily demanding and strain the limits of our memory. And, and there is no scenery to help create the mood. The directions call for unusually skillful expression and movement. In short, we hesitate to attempt such a daring drama when all the eyes of the world are upon us. Would you have us disappoint such exalted personalities after I have whetted their appetite? It was precisely for their pleasure that this drama was composed. For who but these devoted souls can fully relish the spiritual sentiments that are the very essence of this play? Undisturbed in mind, with senses fully alert, they can appreciate the care taken in constructing the plot, developing the characters, and portraying the subtleties of Russia. Mm, but uh, would they not have been equally satisfied by hearing a recitation of our holy scriptures? Uh, true enough, uh, there is no higher satisfaction. And yet, the art of drama has its special place as well. It is for this reason that our great Acharya, Srila Rupa Goswami, has written an elaborate commentary known as Nataka Chandrika, elucidating the laws of drama first set forth in the Natya Shastra of the sage Bharata. The drama we are to perform today adheres to Srila Rupa Goswami's injunctions. And bear in mind the statement of ISKCON's founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, who predicted Krishna consciousness will be established by cultural conquest. This is inspiring. Your words fortify me. Then kindly begin to satisfy these saintly Vaishnavas who like thirsty Chakora birds with their necks stretched high eagerly await the cloudburst of Krishna's pastimes. Like Indra, let loose your lightning bolt and emblazon the sky of our consciousness and let the shower of your nectarian words slake our thirst. May the blessings of the assembled Vaishnavas be our crown of success. Bowed low before the lotus feet of His divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. The earth's rivers are rich with jewels, her mountains lush with plants. The six seasons and heaven's orbs perform a rhythmic dance. A thousand centuries men live, and those are free of fear. Satya Yuga's blessed force prevails both far and near. Saint and king combine as one, for goodness is the norm. The sun's race has reached its crest, Indra Dumna has been born. Mercy, courage, steadfastness, each trait a glowing gem. Adorn the king who liked the Lord, subdues demoniac men. 
brilliantly bedecked, he puts other kings to shame. The monarch of Avantipura, Indra Dyumna, all acclaim. There's no doubt about what you have said. With his enemies subdued and his citizens so loyal, King Indra Dumna is indeed like a blazing ray of Surya. But at times, even the sun is covered by clouds. And so also, it now seems, is the king's unwavering disposition. Lately, he shows little interest in his usual duties. Has this rumor become so common that it is being battered about in public? That must be Vidyapati, the head priest. Come, let's hear what he's saying from behind this curtain. How disturbing. To have been gone only for a fortnight, and upon returning to hear such rumors. Well, while speaking with you, Devira, the commander of the royal army, would clear away all my misgivings, as Indra Dumna depends heavily upon him. Yudhavira! Oh, land among men! Who has woken me up? <laughs> Still sleeping in broad daylight. Well, he has done his job so well, he deserves some extra rest. Who is it? It is I, Vidyapati. Oh. Oh. Is it time to eat? <laughs> What is the question of eating, Olan Hatted One, when you haven't taken your bath? Now listen here. Just because you're the Emperor's most trusted friend doesn't give you the right to disturb me at such an early hour. You, uh, mm. I've come on a matter concerning the king. Oh, what is it? I'm always ready to serve him. I know that. That's why I've come to you. There are rumors about the king. Rumors? And who dares spread rumors against the royal monarch? His queen. She has sent me a note claiming he has become irresponsible. Well, it is high time he inspects our forces. Then you also feel something distracts you. No, 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 no. Don't put words in my mouth. But he has been spending more time than usual at the temple these days. The queen also notices this. Indra Dumna has always been deeply religious. But now the queen says he has lost all interest in his royal responsibilities. And instead has focused his entire attention on God. I wonder what exactly is he praying for? <laughs> hey, hey, you are the chief priest, eh? Huh? If you don't know, who does it? Eh? You're the leader. <laughs> when one's eyes and lips are sealed in prayer, only God can know what's within the heart. God? And perhaps his queen, eh? eh? Perhaps. <laughs> As it is said, what act is unknown to the shining sun? Mm. What truth not revealed to the sages? What sound not heard by the ether? And what secret hidden from one's wife? What secret hidden from one's wife? Hey, <laughs> no, 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 that's a good one to remember. Eh? <laughs> well, Yudhavira, hmm? I shall have to go to see King Indra Dumna at once. Yes, you better go. You better go. I think, uh, and also I'm sure that he'll put all my doubts to rest. Well then, may Lord Vishnu bless you. Hey, hey, what about joining me for some lunch? Take your bath first, it will increase your appetite. <laughs> this natural setting is conducive for resolving my puzzlement. It is in the doom entering the palace garden. Let me carefully study his thoughts while hiding behind this tree. By the grace of the Lord, I have conquered in all directions. Wealth without limit and unrivaled sovereignty have followed me like faithful companions. I have all that anyone could desire, yet still I remain dissatisfied. This is bewildering. My ministers, my queen, they wonder what disturbs me. Without realizing the hollowness of worldly affairs, or oh, how will they understand my intense longing for something more? I want to see the supreme personality of Godhead, the original person, the greatest of all. Yes, yes, with these naked eyes, I want to see him face to face. I, 
I care no longer about heaven's lordship or earthly opulence. Now my family or ministers gone. To others may think me mad or at best presumptuous. I make this solemn pledge today. I will dedicate all my thoughts, words and deeds towards seeing that supreme person who is the ultimate abode and absolute truth. The queen was right. But this is more serious than she ever imagined. Maharaj! Uh, well, <laughs> with the apathy, <laughs> when did you return? <laughs> Just now. I was on my way to the temple. Fortunate are the Brahmins to be always serving the Lord. <laughs> are your sacrificial fires burning brightly, their flames licking the rim of the arena? Protected by your excellent rule, you are always peaceful. And, and what about you, Maharaj? Is all well in the kingdom? Uh, uh, by the blessings of Lord Vishnu, <laughs> good fortune reigns uh, everywhere. Uh, if I may correct you, my dear king, I have detected a growing anxiety in the minds of some. What is the cause? Those close to you have felt a certain alienation on your part, an inattentiveness which is most unusual. I don't deny it. My dear friend, a great change has come over me. <laughs> that much I've already guessed. <laughs> Since you left... I've spent nearly all my time at the temple listening to transcendental narrations of God. Like the rubbing of the sacred Arani sticks, hearing the Supreme Lord's glories has kindled the flame of my faith. Till it now burns like a blazing fire visible to all. What does that mean? You must disregard your other duties. No. Who has said that? Perhaps in the past few days I have been somewhat remiss. But I intend to fulfill all my obligations, rest assured. But that alone will no longer satisfy me until I see the supreme personality of Godhead who rides upon the shoulders of Garuda and until I hold in my hands his two lotus feet which are the world's shelter. My vision will not be soothed nor my heart pacified. But Lord Vishnu resides far beyond the three worlds. How do you hope to achieve his personal audience? When powerful yogis, steeped in meditation, their life sacrificed in renunciation, can rarely even glimpse his effulgence, Maharaj. Ah, but they are not exactly sure, but I am determined, though the task may be awesome. Therefore, after days of solitude, I have decided to go before the learned assembly and ask if anyone present can tell me how to see God with these very eyes. I see. You are fully determined. Well then, all right. May Lord Vishnu fulfill your desire. And I also pledge my full assistance. After all, what else is a friendship for? <laughs> then let us proceed to the assembly without delay. King in the Duna, glory of the Surya Vansa, be ever victorious. Glory to our King, who traverses the earth like the sun god on his chariot, dispelling all darkness by establishing true dharma. Glory to him who protects us from drought, saves us from starvation, shields us from thieves. For his citizens, he is no less than the sum total of all the demigods. All praise to Indra Dumna. Whoever lives in truth, guided by the Brahmins, keeping company with saints, sheltered by the Supreme Lord. My dear reciters, ministers, citizens, I am ever grateful for your auspicious prayers, but today I have come before you with a prayer of my own, and if there be one among you who can answer it, I shall be ever indebted to him. Tell, Tell us, dear, dear king, king, how may we serve you? By the grace of the Supreme Lord, I lack nothing in the way of riches, land, power, or honor. Yet today I feel myself a beggar, a pauper. My dear king, we are shocked. How can your majesty speak in such a way? But what I say is true. Today I regard this vast kingdom and all that it encompasses as a vacant desert. 
for I am bereft of him who alone can fill my heart with joy and serenity. But dear king, Malwa province is opulence personified. A crown of gold and its capital, Avantipura, is the rarest jewel. <laughs> my friend, Avanti may be the envy of the world, but of what value are her riches if they cannot be offered to the proper person? Don't you see? That most worthy person, that soul of souls, the soul of the universe, Lord Vishnu, avoids our kingdom. The supreme personality of Godhead, the most worshipable of all. Where is he? Personally, I am ashamed that in his absence I have accepted life as real. Oh, how long shall this dream last? The winds of time have swept away kingdoms far greater than Avantipura. I no longer wish to enjoy dreams. My wife, my citizens, my kingdom, these are all creations of that artful deceiver, Maya. In my quest for happiness, I believed in the temporary. I confused illusion with reality. Well, dear gentlemen, no longer can I be deceived. The fleeting designations of king and citizen, husband and wife, elder and youth, are not our true identities. For we are not these bodies, nor can we truly own anything connected with them. We are the pure soul within, part and parcel of the Supreme. To serve God, not illusion, and reunite with Him should be our life's only purpose. Thus, I have come before you with a question of singular importance. Is there anyone among you who can tell me how or where I may find the Supreme Personality of Godhead? I must find him, for I deem rendering personal service to him more important than all else. Yes? The respected priest Maharaj suggests that Lord Vishnu as the enjoyer of all sacrifices is present when one offers oblations of grains and ghee into the fire. I concur, of course. Uh, and with the greatest reverence, I touch the feet of those exalted sages who say one should meditate to view the Lord within the core of the heart. But, dear esteemed gentlemen, I have tried all these methods, yet still I am unsatisfied. Please try to understand... I need to see the Lord not only in the fire sacrifice, not only in the mind, not only in a vague or fleeting vision, but face to face. I want to embrace his lotus feet and breathe the fragrance of the sandalwood pulp and tulsi buds that adorn them. And I want to render him all personal services by offering him everything in my possession. My king! Yes? Who calls from the back of the assembly? It is I, a pilgrim just arrived in Avantipura. May I approach your majesty? Enter. May my words, like the sun's beams, illumine your path and draw you towards that effulgent Lord Purushottama, whose darshan you so eagerly desire. Pilgrim. You are welcome. What brings you to Avantipura? That for which you are searching. The Lord, now present on this earth in his deity form, sends me. The Lord, present on this earth? My king, I have the answer to your fervent prayer. Listen attentively. Please, speak on. To bestow the blessings of his personal association upon the conditioned souls. The Lord mercifully manifests himself in forms visible to our material eyes. As the supreme Lord of all energies, God can use them as he likes. Thus, he can accept a form made up of matter and by his touch transform it into spirit. Whether of stone or wood or any other substance, the personal form of God is infused with his absolute nature. Make no mistake in this regard. The deity form is God himself, 
manifested for all to behold. <laughs> what is his doubt? He protests that you are limiting God by imposing on him a conception of form and personality. Uh, dear King, one who fails to accept God as the supreme personality with unlimited energies will certainly see the deity as dull, inert matter. Though the Lord may be worshipped as the impersonal absolute, possessing no qualities, to advance on this path of worship is very troublesome indeed. For one who is embodied, worship of the Lord in his deity form is natural because it fixes some bodily conception in the mind. Not that ascribing such personal attributes to God is imaginary. His form, his name, his abode, his pastimes are all variegated expressions of his absolute spiritual nature. We should never take them to be products of illusion. Though God, being the supreme complete, is both personal and impersonal. It is through his personal feature that he awards the worshipper his greatest mercy of an intimate relationship based on devotional service. I have always worshipped Lord Vishnu as the supreme personality of Godhead. And therefore you are the proper recipient of his special benediction. My dear pilgrim, the whole assembly is sitting in rapt attention, waiting to learn where the Lord may now be found. Some time ago, after traversing the whole of Bharat Varsha, I arrived on an eastern coast known as the Purushottam Kshetra, where the beautiful mountain of Niladri stands. In the center of that mountain grows an enormous banyan tree, and near that tree lies Rohini Kunda, a mere touch of whose waters bestows liberation. Sign. Please continue. On that eastern shore of that lake stands the Nilkantamani deity of Sri Vasudeva. He is worshipped as Sri Nil Madhav. Just by seeing him, one achieves immortality. By the influence of that place where I stayed for one year, I can now perceive Lord Purushottama everywhere and I feel his guidance at every step otherwise how could I arrive here at this very moment just to reply to your question pilgrim who are you you who in a moment have become as dear to me as a lifetime friend you have assured me that my most fervent desire will soon be fulfilled May your words act irresistibly like a potent sacrificial mantra, enabling me to receive Srinil Madhav's grace. Vidyapati, yes? what do you say? I'm as eager as you are to see this Nila Madhava deity, Maharaj. Now, ministers and friends, what is your advice? The best of Avantipura's Brahmanas should go and, and determine, determine exactly where Lord Nil Madhav resides. Friend, do you agree? You hardly had time to rest after your recent journey. Who cares for rest? I'm ready to depart at once, Maharaj. As soon as you bring word back, we shall go in grand procession, complete with full retinue. Coming before Neil Madhav, I shall prostrate myself and beg that he accept our royal entourage, the kingdom, its citizens, and all its wealth as his very own. Then Avantipura will actually shine with the effulgence of the entire spiritual world. Oh, my friend, don't worry yourself so much. Hmm. 
It's easy for you to say that, Pingala. Still unmarried. But just wait till you have to please a father and a husband both. Then you'll know how I feel. Any girl can carry a single jug of water. But just let her try carrying two at once. Well, Lalita, if I was you, I'd make sure my husband was happy first. You're no longer your father's little pet, you know. But it was my father that brought me up from an infant. And it is he who got me married. God knows, when two weeks ago, I heard this strange knock on the door. I never thought, here's the man I'll marry. Even less, when you opened the door and saw a twice born Brahmin standing there. Imagine, a Brahmin at the house of a Sabara. Why, it's practically unheard of. Oh, Vidyapati was so tired, Pingala. Really? He didn't even care that I was an untouchable. Can you imagine? He'd been walking straight for one whole month all the way from Avantipura. Of course, I offered him a seat and some water to drink. I felt so bad to have him see our shabby house. Hmm. Especially he's from Avantipura, which they say is like the heavenly planets. Oh, Lalita, has he accustomed himself to our village life? You know, in one hand we hold our kids and in the other our pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Vidyapati is a simple man, oh. tolerant too. His only complaints over us slaughtering the pigs. Why am I but so? How else can we live? Yeah. How he's married me, an uncivilized sabari. I'll never know. <laughs> and married so quickly at that. My father had me give him whatever best we had. Told me to spare nothing for his comfort. Still, though my father's the head of the tribe, what could I offer? Yet whatever we did for him, he was grateful for. I guess he just couldn't refuse when my father asked him to take me as his wife. Oh, I wish my father would do something like that for me too. <laughs> What's left for me to marry in this village? You know, I'd run away with young Kumar if I thought we could get away with it. Oh, Lalita, you don't know how lucky you are. But Pingala, what will happen to my luck now? What do you mean? My husband's found out about me, Lamada. <gasps> you know how angry father can get? Yes, yes. He warned me never to tell anyone. But every day when he returns from the mountain top, our whole house smells so sweet from camphor musk in sandalwood. How could it be hidden? You know, you know, it's like the demigods are there in person. Lalita? Has your father actually seen any of these demigods? Yes, he says so. In fact, he helps them worship Lord Nila Madhava. How does he expect my husband to believe he's out hunting when at noon he only brings back some fruits and sweets and, and simple forest roots? Is that all you have to eat? Yes, it's prashadam of the deity. Even one mouthful is so satisfying. Oh, oh, what shall I do? Now that my husband's heard about Neela Madhav, he talks about nothing else but going there. He insists I get father to take him along. But I know, I know, I know my father won't agree. Why not? After giving away his daughter, what's to begin by denying this? Huh? It's like arguing over the price of the goat. Once the elephant's been sold. Oh, come now, Lalita. What's wrong with a little joke? I'm afraid if my father refuses, my husband will feel so bad he'll leave as quickly as he can. And I'll be left a widow while still celebrating my marriage. Well, if I was you, I'd do anything to keep such a man. In a thousand births, you won't get such a husband like Vidyapati again. Lolita! Father! Yes, father. Lolita! I'm here! At the well! <laughs> so here you are with your friend Pingola. Hmm? <laughs> I could have guessed as much seeing young Kumar sniffing at the door. <laughs> young lady better run along before your hero takes a fancy to someone else. Hmm? <laughs> sun's just rising. And I must not keep Lord Nilmadha waiting. It would help me get ready. Hmm? Come. (laughs) 
ललिता ललिता थिंकिंग ऑफ गोइंग टू अवंतीपुर मे बी यू विल हैव अ होल हाउस फुल ऑफ सर्वेंट्स टू वेट ऑन यू वेल आई विल नेवर लीव मिलाट्री माउंटेन Even if Kuvera offered me his whole treasury, I wouldn't give up my service to Lord Nilamada. All the pleasures of heaven can't compare with even a moment spent with my Lord. I wouldn't want a lifetime of Brahma if it meant giving up who I am, Vishwasu, personal servant of Lord Nilamada. Father, father. I have something to tell you. Hmm. <laughs> What is it, my dear? Uh, Father, uh, Vidyapati knows about Lord Nilamadava. Hey! Oh. What is that? Who stole him? I, I... You promised never to speak a word. Ah! It's like one just like your mother now lying to me. Father, father, please listen. I didn't tell him. At least not at first. I kept my word. There is only you here to tell. No. should have known all along he was bound to find it out living in the same house father father why not take vidyapati with you no never oh, but he's as eager to see the lord as you are besides he already knows i go alone lord nilamadava wants me only to serve him vidyapati is your son he could be a good assistant after all He is the priest of the emperor himself. Why are you pushing me like this, Lolita? Why? Because if you don't agree to let him go with you, I'm afraid he'll think that you don't trust him. And if he feels hurt, he'll want to leave and won't ever come back. I don't trust him or anyone else. No one but me knows where Lord Nilamadava is. And this big city Brahmins are especially clever. Oh, what can I do? What can I do? No, don't you go blaming me for ruining your marriage, Lolita. Oh, no. Oh, no, father. Oh, father. Oh. Oh. All right, all right. All right, Lolita. I will take him. Oh, father. But on one condition. He goes blindfolded. Blindfolded? That's what I said. Now tell him to get ready right away. The sun is already risen. Faithful wife, your devotion teaches me the meaning of religion. Your chastity of self-control, while your natural simplicity strengthens my austerity. Indeed, all your good qualities have made me your willing student, though it is I who am supposed to be your master. <laughs> Lolita, therefore rise, rise and assume your proper station. For a marriage like an initiation has elevated you to the status of the twice born. My husband's training shows my best side. Don't credit the river banks for directing the water's flow, Lolita. A strong-willed current chisels its own path, though opposed at every turn. <laughs> Lolita, though it was I who struck fire to the wood, it now burns of its own accord. Have you already cleansed my sacred place of worship? so that i can begin my prayers lolita yes but today there's a special worship to perform special worship my dear husband father has agreed to take you to nila madhava lolita lolita you speak the truth yes he agreed just now may lord wish you blessing for this you shall be honored by the emperor himself 
It's enough if my husband's pleased with me. Oh, 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 I almost forgot. What? Father says you'll have to go blindfolded. Blindfolded? I guess he doesn't want anyone to know where Lord Neela Madhava is. I see. Well, never mind. I agree to whatever conditions he sets. Uh, Lolita. Lolita? Uh, do, do one thing. Bring me a handful of uh, mustard seeds. Mustard seeds? You want them just now? Yes, right now. Here. Here. Uh, why are you doing that? <laughs> I, I shall be needing them for worshipping Lord Nilamadava. Ah, very good. <laughs> You're ready. Respectful sir, good morning. You are like a munificent tree, providing all that this pilgrim requires. <laughs> your lovely daughter, like a ripe fruit sprung from your limbs, nourishes my withered body. And now you offer the shade of Nila Madhav's lotus feet, <laughs> cooling shelter for the world where he stole. <laughs> <laughs> Even an old tree like me feels refreshed by a morning shower of such fine words. <laughs> now it's getting late. Let's go. Yes. What's your step, yes. Mr. Deputy? We are leaving the village boundary ah. and approaching the sacred precinct of Nilatri. Uh, 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 I was so eager, I nearly forgot. Uh, Deputy, please don't misunderstand this blindfold. Uh, a vision of God is uh, not easily achieved. As this blindfold veils my eyes, so this soil will cover this mustard seeds. But in due course, these seeds will sprout. And then the plants, like unveiled eyes, more numerous than the Evendras, will guide the eager king in Zoduna to Sri Nila Madhav's lotus feet. My dear hunter? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. My dear hunter, tell me, this forest part seems to be filled with devotees softly murmuring to Nila Madhav's glories. <laughs> no, no, Vidyapati. That's only the sound of the bumblebees. Bumblebees? <laughs> they must be drunk with the sweet honey of Nila Madhav's darshan. <laughs> Singing Celestia. Singing Celestia. <laughs> Those are only the forest birds. Ah, yes. <laughs> like the raised voices of the palace birds praising their king. The peacock's rhythmic call and the cuckoo's gentle cooing. Along with the sweet vibrations of the chakuras, chakravakas, fill the air with pleasing cries in adulation of their lord. Indeed. Indeed, this whole forest resembles a palace courtyard. Uh, I, I hear beating drums. And feel the fine, soothing spray of splashing fountains. Yes. These are the thundering falls and bubbling streams. That makes me ladry like heaven itself. Yes, it must be heaven. For I can feel the flowers falling from the hands of celestial denizens, whose whispering voices fill the air. With apathy, those are the fragrant breezes that sweep across me ladry, casting bouquets of flowers everywhere. Is there an army passing nearby? I hear the crackling sounds of plants, thickets, and trees being cleared. The 
whole mountain trembles with the force of the wind. No, no, Vidyapati. Those are only the lordly elephants on their way to the lake. <laughs> Out of fear, other animals are fleeing in all directions. Now I hear a new sound. And does the breeze get even cooler? Yes. You hear the charming songs of Osprey's cranes and other waterfowl. We are approaching the eastern shore of Rohini Kunda. The sacred lake that lies at the feet of Lord Nilamathav. Come. Come. Come, we shall soon be there. Come. Wait, what is that? Clearly these are the sacred mantras of the Vedas. The demigods. Demigods? Yes. They come to offer their daily worship to Lord Nilamadha. We mustn't delay with everybody. Their appearance is very rare since their day equals six of our months. Come. Come. Here we are. Let's let's quietly sit in this thicket and and watch it. My, my dear father, yes, kindly remove this cloth so that I may also oh, see. Oh, excuse me, in my excitement I forgot. Come, see. Coming from heaven. See, they're led by Lord Brahma. And there is Indra. And Narada as well. And various others. All bearing wonderful offerings for Lord Nilamata. See, see how nicely they enter dancing in a line and, and move about, forming a semicircle before the altar doors. All the while, the chant of Purusha Shukta prayers accompanied by my instruments. See, see now one of the demigods is ringing a hand bare. And there, there he opens the doors to reveal the wondrous form of Lord Nilamata. <sighs> Lord Brahma offers Arati. And see Indra is removing the old garland and putting on a new one. And what all various gifts in bowls they have brought. Oh, my Lord. Oh. Look. Look. The arati is over. Yes, it is. And now they are ascending. See how artistically they move about. And now they are ascending with music and dance. At the end of the arati. And there. There they go to heaven. No, come. Come with me. Yes. Come. There is my Lord. See the many jewels adorning his body like so many stars in a night sky. My Lord. My Lord, are you well today? Have you been enjoying the cool breezes blowing from Rohini Kunda? Uh, today your servants, the demigods, have brought many nice offerings. My lord, some people worship the demigods as supreme, but they are actually dependent upon you. Uh, I have noticed that Lord Brahma's eight eyes oversee the entire creation feels blessed to place your lotus feet upon his foreheads. Even Indra trembles like a leaf in your presence. <laughs> Whenever my villagers hold festivals, to honor these demigods, my lord, I take birth just to please my subjects. But you, 
You are actually my only worshipable lord. In your absence, the seconds and minutes are unbearable. <laughs> my, my daughter complains that I keep her awake talking about you in my sleep. <laughs> she said uh, I cursed the sun last night for moving so slow, making me wait so long to see you. <laughs> my lord, uh, does this massage refresh you? I, I hope the ungent of Sandalut Park camphor and mask is more pleasing today. I, I told my daughter to grind even more. Oh, <laughs> I, I almost forgot. Uh, here is my daughter's husband. With apathy. Hmm. Here is a garland that Indra removed from Nilamadhava. <laughs> my lord, this is Vidyapati. He's a learned Brahmin coming all the way from Abantipur. In fact, he's a chief priest of King Indradumna. So I'll let him offer you pleasing prayers while I go to collect for his fruits and flowers. O oh Lord Mukunda, best tower of liberation, today, having stood at a distance and seen your eternal form of bliss and knowledge, I know without a doubt that you are the supreme reality. Who could fail to be attracted by your wonderful appearance, resembling a newly grown tomulo tree with blue shield? As I delight in smelling the aroma of Tulusi and Sandalwood, Offered at your lotus feet. I feel certain that this one act of mine is far, far greater than all the Vedic study and sacrifices I've pursued for an entire lifetime. Surely, surely your personal presence on this sacred mountain, your eternal abode, has liberated every living entity here from all material entanglements. This mighty Banyan and that peaceful Rohini Kunda are all a part of Boykunta. Indeed, these creepers, forest animals, even that ordinary crow sitting in yonder tree. Oh! All are liberated! Hardly have I uttered these words when the proof appears before me. Blackish crow, nastiest of all earthly creatures, have fallen from its perch into Rohini Kunda. And before my very eyes, it now rises upwards with a beautiful four handed form to Boykunta, vanishing from my vision. Here is the elixir of immortality, hardly a few steps away. Like the dirty crow, like the dirty crow, my lord, let me throw myself into the arms of Mother Rohini so that she may wash away all my sins and then my earthly stay forever. Oh, Brahman. Wait. Have you forgotten why you came? Oh. King Indradumna awaits your return with intense anticipation. That mighty monarch, Earth's protector incarnate, lives half awake, half in dreams. Like a forgotten forefather, Doomed to Narakaloka, with no son to deliver him. Selfish Vidyapati, shameless one. What kind of man are you that leaves aside your best wishing friend and cares for nothing else but your own salvation? Just see, my lord, for you has wisdom renounced her reason and strength of sovereignty becoming meek. Duty and friendship all forgotten. Your vision for a moment gotten. One cares no more for either life or death. Now, my lord. My lord, I pray, dispatch me with all haste. So Indradumna, too, can be an object of your grace. Indradumna! Could you have heard me? What is that about Indradumna? Well, I was only begging the lord to protect the king, since I'm no longer there to assist. Mm. <laughs> well, don't stand there like a stone. Come Help carry this load. <sighs> Do you see, Mother, it's love for the Lord. The Lord's presence is overwhelming. It always me into silence. <laughs> well, I am at no loss for words. I feel quite at ease 
in the presence of Lord Nilamathava. Really, here is where I feel most at home. My daughter, the villagers, they need me, no doubt. But as for me, this is the place I pray for. I wait for the day when I can stay with Nila Madhava, freed from all other cares. Vishwavashu, please hear me. <laughs> Whose voice is that? Vishwavashu, my dear devotee, it is I, Nil Madhav, who speaks to you. Lord Nila Madhav! Do you doubt I can speak? No, no, of course not. But never before have you spoken to me. Now listen carefully. For many years you have served me faithfully. Offering the simple fruits and flowers. It's all I could arrange, my lord. Knowing that, I have accepted everything, pleased with your devotion. But now, I want to be worshipped in great opulence, as I normally am. King Indradumna, the ruler of this planet, is my great devotee, and he awaits to worship me royally. Now, my lord? My lord! My lord! Who will you say no more? Oh. <laughs> like a good man's axe chopping a tree from its very root. His words have sent me reeling. <laughs> the lord is independent, free as the wind. And I, like a tree struck down in a tempest. In any case, oh. the Lord has made you a special object of his favor. Favor? Yes. This you call a favor? Yes, certainly. Now the Lord has personally spoken with you. But he has rejected me. Oh. In the past, you were so satisfied with my simple offerings. But now he wants opulence. Why, why, why this sudden change? After uh, all, the Lord is a Kipati. Not uh, one, uh, but hundreds of thousands of goddesses of fortune attend his lotus feet. As the master of Vaikuntha, he dwells in mansions bedecked with countless jewels. Maybe that's how you know him. But to me, he is Nilamadha who lives in the forest of Niladri and gladly accepts the service of his Sabara friend, Bishop Asu. The Lord is inconceivable. Why he decides one way or another, none can know. We had an understanding, Nila Madhava and I. But someone has come between us and influenced him. <laughs> no one can swear the Lord. He's the controller of the three worlds. Well, how then can he be made to act against his own will? Someone's done with the mother against me. And now I know who it is. You pretty Brahmin! I should have known all along. What have you said? What have you done to change the mother was mine? Tell me! Nothing. Ah. Nothing at all. I assure you, it's the Lord's own desire that King Indodumna would serve him. And you have nothing to do with rousing the desire? You, the priest of King Indratumna! Well, I will fix that. Come. Come with me. Come. Uh, help. Help. Save me. Help me. Oh, oh I must rush to my husband. Oh, feet move quickly. What fate is mine, born a lowly sabari, now trying to become a Brahmin's wife? How I wish I could sprout wings and fly away from this nasty village, taking my dear husband with me. But like a clumsy insect whose wings are too weak for flying, I'm hardly suited for living as a Brahmin's wife. My rough upbringing still controls me, keeping me bound to this village of my birth. Oh, feet become strong wings and bear me quickly along. For my husband now suffers due to marrying me. <laughs> <laughs> 
this way, but I must prove myself to you the more of a pen. Help! Help me! Help! My father. My father, what are you doing to me? What am I doing? What am I doing? You should have thought more carefully before playing such a tricky game with a Sabara king. We Sabaras know how to keep someone penned up. Help! Help! Help me! Yes! Let your king save you now. The two of you wanted to cheat me out of worshipping Lord Nidamasa, but that will never be. Never be so long as I live. Oh, dear husband! Dear husband! Oh, best of a bandipura's Can you hear me? has come to torture me, Father. Husband. Have you no mercy? Husband, it's me. Lolita. Lolita? Yes. Yes, oh, my husband. Please forgive me that my father is so cruel. But I'll get him to release you. I promise. Uh, Lolita, I'm bound up like an animal awaiting slaughter. And now you come to torment me with promises of freedom. Oh, oh I'll beg and plead. <laughs> if he doesn't set you free... I'll put an end to my life. No. No, Lalita, may you be blessed. If ever I reach in Radumna, you can't imagine the reward he would bestow upon you. As soon as you're free, you must leave this village at once. Don't worry. I will travel day and night. It will take me nearly a month to reach Avantipura. Oh, please take me with you. Don't worry, Lolita. Before two moons have grown full, you will see your husband return. But this time, not alone. For along with me will come not only the monarch, King Indradumna, whose mighty arms protect the entire earth, but also his powerful army. Like the coast of a jewel, this brilliant ray of the Sun Dynasty will shine like a bright ornament upon the chest of Lord Nilamadaba. Listen. Listen, what is that? Someone's coming. Yes. I must go at once. Oh, please don't forget this lowly wife of yours and the glamour of Avantipura. If you do, my life will really be at an end. Don't worry, Lolita. Onward, horses, onward! Run swift as the wind piercing the forest, as your thundering hooves pound the soft grassy floor, spurred on by my whip, which crackles like lightning above your heads. Halt! Halt! Ah! Ah! We have come to a clearing... The thick canopy of leaves gives way to the open sky. The path ends at this sheer cliff, which clefts the air as if suspended in space, arresting our further progress. And behold, behold, with Dapati, there to the east, shimmering in the distant sea of the morning mist, a wondrous mountain towers upon the horizon. See how the sun... Rising from behind seems to beg permission before heralding the day. Ah, at last, we have reached the cherished goal of our month-long journey. It is Niladri Mountain, whose extraordinary qualities make even the goddess of fortune worry that she may lose the attention of her ever-attentive husband. The mountain's flowing rivers are like cascading tresses, bedecked with valuable jewels. The birds which gladden a forest sing so sweetly that even Chitrarotu, with all his heavenly musicians, is put to shame. For soft breezes, laden with the fragrance of jasmine, kodumbo, and parijata, 
a more pleasing than a thousand charmed waving goddesses of fortune. Maharaj, <laughs> no wonder my Lakshmi has become jealous. In the presence of Niladri, Lord Nilamadhava has quite forgotten her. <laughs> Point to the exact place where you found the deity. Well, from here it is difficult to see. Be patient, my friend, for we shall soon be there. And without a doubt, Niladri will be pleased to offer you her most cherished treasure, Nilamadhava himself. I shall call the commander of my troops. Yudhuvira, come up front. Yes, Your Majesty. Oh, mighty warrior, feast your eyes upon this stupendous vision. Our goal, finally in sight. The sun god seems to be bathing the sacred mountain in millions of shivering particles of light. I have personally witnessed the universal administrator's bowing before Nila Madhava as his menial servant. Enough talk! What is our plan? We must proceed cautiously. But now is the time when that fearless king of the Shaburas, Vishavasu, is up and about. Caution? How are we to worry over a mere keep of swines? You, Tavira, don't minimize his strength. For he's protected by Nila Madhava, with whom he converses on the friendliest of terms, as we with one another. <laughs> David Brahmin, allay your fears. Remember, you are not alone. If this rowdy fellow so much as hinders our royal monarch, he shall have to deal with me. Personally, you easy, you Tavira. Bear in mind their relationship. Loyalty to a king is also foremost in my mind. If I speak respectfully of my father-in-law, it's not out of family affection, you Davira, but out of reverence for his exalted spiritual realization, which is slowly cast in no way diminishes. After all, ours is a divine quest which will succeed by genuine devotion alone, not a military campaign to be won by a show of arms. Well spoken, Vidyapati. I have come not as a conquering hero, but as one to be conquered. This armor and weaponry may give the wrong impression. Yes, my lord. Our lord is conquered by a heart, softened with love, and not one covered by plates of steel. Let the two of us ascend the mountain as humble mendicants. Here, take this armor. At least your majesty should allow me to accompany you. The, the jungle could be dangerous, my lord. You wait with some of the troops at the foot of the mountain. Don't worry, I'll be safe. Yes, your majesty. Let us proceed. Yes. We have come to the Sabaras village. There is the residence of Vishavasu. Right, must be busy with the morning duties. Hmm. Strange that no light yet illuminates the interior and that no smoke curls forth from the chimney. <laughs> Worthy friend, please restrain your natural sentiments a while longer. Uh, let's continue on now that our goal is so close. Right. Then let us leave aside this chariot and proceed on foot. Hello, fish no guide my feet to the proper part. Ah, look there! I see nothing of special note. Look more closely between those two stones. Why, it's a common mustard plant. No, no, not at all common. See here, another. Yet another. With the apathy, why are these lowly mustard plants so extraordinary? The way unknown, seed secretly sown. After two months grown, Nilamad of a show. Oh, oh, I see. Wonderful. Now I can lead. Here is one. And here. And there. Oh, delicate plant. Though I am emperor of the world, today I have become your debtor. Listen. Listen. Claps, claps of thunder and eat. And over at the sky is suddenly dark. The sun a moment ago shining victoriously is now unceremoniously covered by masses of insurgent clouds. In its place. Oh, why did monarch feel the earth? She seems to throb as if calling for help. The morning dew has barely dried, yet now uninviting hissing winds blow sand and sun in all directions. 
Who dares to cause this sacred mountain fear? Let him boldly declare himself my enemy in battle face to face like a man. Courageous hero, think carefully. With the weapons of man is advised to challenge thus. The air is thick with blowing dust. Ah, look, look how our footprints are obscured. This fragile trail of mustard plants will soon be hidden. We must proceed or our purpose will be thwarted. Yes. Here, take my hand. So we may not be separated in this terrible, all-encompassing darkness. So powerful is this wind that we can hardly face it. Uprooted trees lay fallen on every side. The beats down like showers of arrows. How will these delicate plants survive this tempest? How we our sacred mission accomplish? Where is the trail we are meant to tread? Ah, ah, here it is. Oh, no, there, and there. Listen, listen, it sounds like angry demons running. No, it is a herd of ashes. Their hard hooves strike the ground with thunderous ferocity, while their frenzied brain resounds like an eerie echo from the mountain caves. Let us hurry with the apathy. Yes. At last I travel through this forest. There were no answers of jackals going hideously, or shrieking birds flying frightened from their nests. My eyes perforce blindfolded them, and now shut tight in fearfulness. My friend, look, look there. Please see. We are approaching a place of special sanctity. Rohini Kunda! This is a sacred spot you dreamt of. Here is the lake which is eternal night to the touch. And there, there the Banyan with a mighty arms entwined the temple of Lord Nilamadava. His lotus feet, your heart will soon enshrine. Uh, uh, this devilish storm has wreaked its awful havoc, defiled the chastity of this sacred lake. Water, see the agitation. Lotus is scattered in the storm's cruel wake. The banyan spread its mighty branches, defending against the raging storm's attack. Now see his limbs shattered, fallen, his bows bent in shameful lament. The door! The door! Oh, grab the door! Yes. I have waited long for this moment. Gain opposes us to the very end. Pull harder. Harder. What? Gone. Ah. In the dumna. In the dumna. It does tear. His ruddy cheeks now pale. His fair face pallid, lifeless, buried in a grave of disappointment. His eyes once moist and eagerly searching. And now, like two blind, dried up worlds where hope has died. These lips, that praise the Lord with every breath, are now silently pressed together as a death. Is this how Surya's race is meant to end? Warrior kings whose conquest knew no bounds. Haunted, stricken down without a single blow. What is the meaning of it all? I want to know. What is the meaning of it all? In the dumna. In the do not pray awaken. His breath quickens. His lips quiver, his face is lost and now returns. Beaming eyes now unfolding, like two lotuses beholding. In waking consciousness, the sunlit more. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, the apathy. Uh, uh, I seem to have fallen asleep. What a terrible dream I had. We were ascending the Ladri when a great storm suddenly blew up. But how can this be? My clothes are indeed wet. What has happened? The severe shock has affected his memory. Where are we? The lake and the temple? No, no, it cannot be. I only dreamt that we found Neil Madhav gone, didn't I? But then, 
There is the temple standing empty as before. Answer me with the apathy. Was I dreaming or am I dreaming still? Why don't you reply? Your silence makes me fear the worst. Why force me when whatever I say will only cause you farther pain? Then it is true. Where is Neil Madhav? He was standing at this very place. The garland you are wearing was taken from around his neck. Where has he gone? How could he leave? It makes no sense. The Lord called for you. And here I am, ready to serve him. Here I am, Neil Madhav. I have come. Your servant is Radumna is here. Ah. I remember hearing the Lord's voice as clearly as I hear yours. But how could I forget those words that broke the heart of the Sabara king? Sabara. Oh, now I understand. No, you don't think. Who else would have done it? But to remove the deity from the temple. He's a Sabara. What won't he do? That rogue, he deserves Yuttavira's rot. Warat, Warat, what do you intend to do? There are ways to make a man reveal even the most closely guarded secret. Mm. Now it all adds up. His plan was to let you die in prison. But he was afraid of retaliation. That cunning fellow knew that if you did not return, I wouldn't stop searching until I found both Neil Madhav and you. He released you only to gain time to hide the Lord of A. He did declare that as long as B did not allow us to have Lord Nilamadra. But in the Dumna, wait! Look. Look how the storm has suddenly abated. Only a morbid stillness hangs in the air. My heart is as decimated as this forest. Whatever joy I felt is crushed, leaving within me only a ghost of despair, dancing for lonely alone. I, too, am devastated. As we traveled from Avantipura, I swam in an ocean of bliss, floating in the waves of joyous anticipation of seeing the full moon of Nilamadev's face. But now, but now that moon has suddenly winged, the tide reversed and I'm left gasping upon the shore of disappointment. But I shall not give up. Neil Madhav must be rescued and this culprit brought to justice. Indadumna, Indadumna, can we not avoid bloodshed? Whatever Visuvasu did was out of his love for the deity. You know it is said that there are four ways of getting someone to do what one wants. Hmm? By offering choice words of flattery, by convincing through logic, by enticing through bribery, and only if all else fails... Only then, by force. Yes, you're right. This Sabara may be dear to the Lord, so I'll try the most civil policies first. Let's hope we can persuade him to return the deity without using force. This fair decision is worthy of your nobility. Ah, here is our army encampment. Yudhavira! Yudhavira! Thank God your majesty has returned. Returned, yes. But without success, the deity has been abducted. What? By whom? All evidence points to the Sabara Vishravasu. Now my words shall be fulfilled. And not so fast. First we must find out where he has hidden Lord Neil Madhav. When he feels the sharp edge of my sword, he'll squeal like a swine. Or his tongue will become food for the dogs. Mm. Vidyapati recommends we pursue a more peaceful policy. Peace? We've had enough of peace. That's not why I am here. Exactly. And as this is a matter of peaceful persuasion, His Majesty and I shall go alone. Your Majesty, I say this situation demands turn action. Why unnecessary risk lives when some open diplomacy? Maybe that's all required. True with the apathy, but boldness has its place as well. Yudhavira. Yes, Your Majesty. Let the troops surround the village. With the apathy and I will enter the Sabara's home, and you stand by to come immediately if needed. Now dispatch the men and send the chamberlain with the royal crown and cape. Yes, Your Majesty. Your Majesty's royal vestments. Now lead the way. i 
Sahara Spirit. Now here is the road that forms its perimeter. Hmm? My friend, even had we missed the road, this terrible stench that chokes the air is itself a most explicit boundary. <coughs> this putrid, reeking smell turns my stomach. Perhaps the Sahara is not exactly famous for their refinement. You know, in the past I counted more pigs than people in this village. <laughs> <laughs> they must raise flies as well. <laughs> My dear Diapati, I never knew you had married into such opulence. <laughs> How many swine did you receive as dowry? <laughs> Indeed, due to your Brahminical tolerance, you have become a wealthy man. <laughs> oh, with Diapati, <laughs> just see your quickened pace. <laughs> it reveals the eagerness of a newlywed. <laughs> Enjoy your laughter, if you will. Soon you shall see the proof of my Brahminical strength. As an ugly worm emerges from its cocoon, a beautiful butterfly. So my good wife, Lolita, though a Sabari by birth, has developed all the refinements of the twice born. Listen, listen, Maharaj. Do you hear that lovely singing from within this courtyard walls? That's Lolita's voice without a doubt. She must be busy attending to her daily chores. Uh, I'll have a little fun with her. <laughs> <laughs> Just see what has become of your brahminical gravity. Why, my dear... You're behaving just like a fresh youth in love. Aha! <laughs> Throwing stones at your wife over the courtyard walls. <laughs> ah. ah! Those pesky monkeys playing tricks again. Making such a mess. Just hear them now. Knocking on the door like some respectable visitor. <laughs> well, I'll show them a few tricks of my own. <laughs> a oh. butterfly. <laughs> Is this a proper greeting for a beloved husband? No, no. I, I thought you were a monkey. Monkey? First you touched me with your broom, and now you abuse me with the name. Mm-hmm. A royal reception. <laughs> oh, my husband. Please forgive me. <laughs> Lolita, never mind. Never mind. Stand up. I've returned true to my word, and this time not alone. My dear, please offer your respects to the emperor himself... Maharaja Inzadum, how king of the monkeys. Nandulita, <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> no, no, uh, is your father home? The emperor wishes to meet him. Yes, but he hasn't been going out much lately. Oh, and why is that? Well, I don't know. He seems ill, but won't say what's wrong. The other day oh. his whole body started trembling. He fell on the ground and was foaming from the mouth. Oh. Other times he is feverish and just lies in bed breathing very heavily. And whenever I try to help him, he gets angry with me. Lolita, who is there? Vidyapati has returned with a very special guest. Let me deal with him. Hmm. <laughs> My dear father-in-law, it's so nice to see you. Please allow me to introduce his majesty. Maharaja Indra Dumna, Emperor of the World. I was expecting your visit sooner. Maharaja Indra Dumna, descendant of Surya's glorious race, is touring the earth, ridding her of all insubordinate miscreants. Out of affection, out of affection, he has interrupted his travels to show special honor to our family. Our family? Yes. Perhaps you've forgotten that he succeeds by raising pigs. We're untouchables. Why contaminate his majesty with our presence? Or are we the insubordinates he wishes to subdue? Not at all. The kings of Avantipura and the priestly members of Vidyapati's family have been on intimate terms for generations. I've looked forward very much to this meeting. Besides, I find this simple setting a pleasant contrast to the opulence of palace life. Whether standing in such a filthy place provides an interesting change, I can't say. 
But to be stuck here for one's whole life is certainly no picnic. Anyway, if her poverty is entertaining, then at least we have rendered a little service. Your son-in-law speaks highly of your saintly qualities. My son-in-law? My son-in-law is so clever, you will convince you the washerman's brain ass is a great philosopher. Don't believe a word he says. But I described how magnanimous you were in forgiving me your daughter, though she alone tended to all your needs. And most of all, I related to the king in detail your intimate relationship with Lord Nilamantaba. There is the fault in this Brahman's words. Yes. His words are indeed sweet. But like a horse alluring smile, they hide a cheating heart. Father, don't speak like that. You keep quiet. No, no, no. It's not as you think, dear girl. What he meant to say was, a Brahmin, by his sweet but truthful speech, relieves one of one's material attachments, just as a prostitute, by fully satisfying her client, cheats him of his lusty feelings. I don't know what my material attachments are. But what name should I give one who steals away the object of my spiritual attachment? And what punishment does it deserve? Isn't it I who should be asking these questions of you? You! You may be learned in feathers. And you! No doubt you have unlimited power and wealth. You think you can purchase God with this just you've got that girl in? But he's completely indifferent to all your allurements. What's the value of your puny wealth and knowledge? Nothing! Nothing! You will never... No! Never be yours! Do you hear me? He is gone! Gone because of you! Enough! Father! Yes, Tonina! Yes, Tonina! Arrest him! Arrest him! No! Don't ask him, Donna! How dare you insult the royal monarch? You are not really in Chutavira. Is he drunk with wine? Fortunately, no. I try to tolerate this insult. What use of his weapons and his mighty arms if in their presence a religion can arrogantly stand? Patience. Father. Now I ask you in the name of Vishnu, where have you hidden Neil Madhav? Answer me! So, you will not admit to this senior act. Yes, Your Majesty. Have this village surrounded. Oh, no. Seize every grown man and have him tied up. No. And search every home. Allow no one to leave, neither man, woman, nor child. Oh, Father. Come down. Come down. punishment for stealing the object of one's spiritual attachment. Well, now you shall find out firsthand. Take him away! Oh, no! Oh, hold it. Oh, Father! at the thought of what this Savara has done. Uh, at the outset, I should have come to Niladri myself. But instead, I attended personally to lesser matters and engaged others to find you who are the goal of my life. Now just see the result. But then, my life had been a dreary chronicle of worldly affairs. It is better that I sent with the apathy, for the Brahmins are more dear to you than all others. The fact is, no one can move you against your will. Of that I am certain. Does it mean you wish to be worshipped by the Savara king? Is his desire more intense than mine? Has he bound you by devotion and not by force? Your Majesty. Yes. We have searched every Sabara's house, but the deity is nowhere to be found. And their king? What does he say? Like a dumb man, he maintains Tony silence. Strangely calm and indifferent amidst all the tumult. Only moments ago, this Sabara was neither dumb nor dull. And now he withdraws into himself like a tortoise stuck in its limbs within. His tolerance befits a great sage. Not a swineherd. 
Are his thoughts sublime or merely debased? Ah, if only I could read his mind. Well, I'll soon find out how hard his Tony shell is. I'll chisel him at his fortitude until he cracks. Using my sword or like a miner his pickaxe. I'll break off his hard, crusty shell until he finally tells me where he's headed, Lord Neil Madhav. I assure you, Your Majesty, that you will not have to wait any longer. Oh, I wish it had not come to this. I have followed with the Apathy's counsel, but all has failed. Govindam. What is that? Oh, the sound of Tuvina. It is the venerable sage Narad Muni. Purusham Tamaham Bhajami. You have come in a most timely way, for the disappearance of Sri Neel Madhav has plunged me into an ocean of anxiety. Indra Dumna, O oh virtuous one, be pacified. The Siddhas, Rishis, and demigods of the higher worlds have all heard of your exalted devotion. And wish you well. Therefore, please be free of all anxiety. You should know that the Supreme Personality of Godhead eternally exists beyond the influence of this material energy. Under the illusion of the spiritual potency, Yoga Maya, you are now in anxiety that some harm has come to him, exactly as an ordinary servant worries for the welfare of his beloved master. Dear Yudhana, the Supreme Lord controls the three worlds. And even the greatest demigods obey his orders. What is the question of any harm coming to him? The Lord is left for reasons of his own, so you need not punish the survivors. They are innocent. And the leader Vishavasu is as great a devotee of the Lord as you are. Despite your ardent desire to see him, the Lord will no longer be visible in his real mother form. Never again. Never. But now compose yourself and listen attentively, for I have come to tell you of the Lord's desire. I am listening with full submission. Construct a magnificent temple upon the sacred mountain of Miladri. Then, just to please you, the Lord will appear in an extraordinary form, carved from a wooden log. He will be known as Jagannath and shower benedictions upon the entire world. Have you understood, my dear sage? Your words have spared not only the Sabara's lives, but my own life as well. On the horizon of the sea of despair, hope again lifts its eager face like the sun rising after a long stormy night. When the temple is complete, I shall return and take you to the abode of Lord Brahma, creator. We shall invite him to personally inaugurate the temple worship. Now I must go. Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami. I must talk to you, Vira. Jai Sheila, Your Majesty called. Have you, Vira, bring the Sabara king here at once and send Vidyapati as well? Yes, Your Majesty. My dear king. My dear friend, I almost committed a great sin. That could only be in regard to my father-in-law. Has the date been found? Yes, and no. Here is Yudhavira with the Sabara King. Yudhavira? Yes, Sir Majesty. Your sword. Please let me handle him. Your sword. My friend, you are free. I don't understand. There are many things that you don't understand. Huh. Jai Sheila, release all the Sabaras and give each of them a hundred gold coins. Tell them that Indra Dumna, king of Avantipura, out of esteem for their king and as compensation... For whatever trouble he has caused them, 
offers this small gift and hopes they'll be satisfied. Is there anything further? Yes. Tell them there is no way to measure their good fortune. For the Lord of the universe, the supreme creator of all the worlds, has declared that he will soon manifest himself in a special form made of wood to accept the worship of all people of the world and that a great temple will be constructed here at Niladri. My friend, I beg your forgiveness. Out of desperation to find Lord Neil Madhav, I wrongly blamed you. As you well know, there is no greater pain than being separated from the Lord. I was just visited by Sri Narad Muni, the sage of the demigods. He praised your exalted devotion for the Lord. Now I realize that your anger was due to intense feelings of separation from Neil Madhav. Please, please excuse my hostility, as the ignorance of one also blinded by love. Well then, wonderful, wonderful. This is indeed a cause for rejoicing. I shall have to prepare a feast. Yes, let the whole village be invited. Who could have imagined such bitter rivalry ending in mutual satisfaction? Enmity transformed into admiration. Here is the proof of God's greatness that he can accept the service of unlimited devotees and reciprocate perfectly with each. My dear Indra even among the saints of this world, your devotional fervor surpasses all. As the golden Mount Shumeru towers above the island of Jambudipa and eclipses the Himalayas. Father, Father, who can estimate your good fortune? Do you not feel joy at the prospect of having such a magnificent temple by your very door? Joy. Yes. For you and your king. Myself, I am condemned. My good sir. No, not sir. A king, yes, but of the low-born swineherds. Shall we be permitted to enter your temple? Not my temple. It shall belong to the Lord of the universe, who counts all from emperor to Sabara as his sons. And the towns. Untouchables like us as sweeper as father. I shall consider it a great honor to be a sweeper for the Lord. And I too. Indeed, I'll be happy to perform any service for my Lord. Uh, how kind he was to one so low. He accepted the simple food from my very hands. Fruits and vegetables gathered from the forest. He let me bathe him with these hands and massage his body with fragrant oil. Ah, oh, how intimate our relationship was. Oh, oh, my Lord, my dear most friend, why? Why have you forsaken me? Why? why? Will it ever be like that again? Alone, the two of us, day after day, month after month, for years together. My Lord, I need the throngs of worshippers served with such opulence and splendor. Will you still notice your Sabara friend? Oh, Mother of God. Please hear me. Neil Madhav is with you still. Only now he has entered deep within your heart and enthroned himself upon a golden seat of love, just as you have eternally endeared yourself to him. I have just heard Narad Muni glorify your exalted devotion. Be consoled by this knowledge. There is no question of actual separation for one whose love is as great as yours. What is our Lord's desire? He will come as Jagannath Swami to shower benedictions upon all people of the world without distinction. And what needs to be done? A temple worthy of his glory must be constructed to receive him. Rulers throughout the world must be informed 
that they should offer their wealth and their best sculptors for this purpose. And I shall arrange for thousands of Brahmins to perform 1,000 continuous Ashraveda Yagas. I will ask the villagers to supply ghee from the best of their cows and ample grains from their fields. Knowing the Lord's desire, the ruling demigods of the various planetary systems will undoubtedly bless us with their presence and preside over the function. But this will be no ordinary occasion. The Lord of all creation is going to appear. And what is our part? We, Sabaras, please order us. All able-bodied men, women, and children of the village should help. We require huge quantities of stone for building. Where is the nearest source? Baulmala. It's not far from here. Then a road must be constructed from there directly to Niladri Forest. How glorious the day when we will see the Lord riding upon a chariot to the magnificent temple for his grand installation. Now, from this moment onward, let us direct all our efforts towards the fulfillment of that goal. Yes, yes Maharaj. Dear son Narad, I pray that Indra Dumna return to earth with the swiftness of Garud, for time moves impatiently in its destined course. May his prayers be sincere, his deeds ever fruitful. My father, as you are the highest authority, your blessings assure the success of Indra Dumna's mission. Narad, this king's good qualities are assurance enough. He must be an intimate devotee of the Lord. For how else can he enter this planet, Satyalok, which is inaccessible to humans? That is a fact. Who but in the Dumna could have built such a majestic temple, towering towards the sun, cleaving the heavens? He wanted me to offer this temple to the Lord, hoping my presentation would induce the Lord to appear. But Jagannath will come only by Indra Dumna's fervent prayers. Throughout the first fifty years of my life, Ladhari was present as the Neel Madhav deity. Today marks the beginning of the second half of my life, when Jagannath shall reign supreme. Mm -hmm. When you explain Lord Jagannath's liberal compassion, the reason for his advent became strikingly clear. Neel Madhav's mercy was available to a relatively few. But Lord Jagannath will not distinguish between demigods or humans, high-born or low, male or female. Whoever sees him will at once be liberated. Even in Kali Yuga, when men are devoid of all virtues, they will still receive the blessings of Jagannath's causeless mercy. Such is his destined mission, which none can check. Yet Indradhimna alone can cause him to appear. Then with my father's permission, I should at once go to assist Indradhimna, for all our hope and confidence rest upon him. I shall not be far behind. As Indradhimna has requested, I will come to establish the Lord in his magnificent temple. As I near the earth, aboard this fly plane, a host of thoughts, like an advanced greeting party of my dear most friends, comes forward to embrace my mind. The apathy will be overjoyed to hear of Jagannath's manifestation. The transcendental wooden log, originally a Kalpariksha desire tree, swept down in the milk ocean from the island of Svetadipa. And broken-hearted Vishwavasu shall finally be consoled when he realizes that Neil Madhav's sudden departure was a deception of love to favor his devotees with even greater mercy. Of my devoted commander Yuddhavira, as well as my queen, must be waiting ever faithful. Oh, 
when I describe the opulence of Satyalok, they will open their mouths wide in amazement. Oh, soon I shall be with you all, for there, there is the temple summit, with its sharp chakra puncturing the passing clouds in joyous victory. Everything appears in the same good condition it was in when I left with Narad. Those who visit now can scarcely realize the great struggle we underwent to complete the construction. Thousands of men tirelessly labored to bring these colossal stones great distances. Then the most talented craftsmen from far and near set to work skillfully carving the slabs and setting them in place until at last the lofty gopuram towered towards the heavens. Ah, I know its tone as if it were my own dear child raised with affection. Only, only the brilliance of the slates now porous with age has changed like the smooth luster of youth faded with the passage of years. Now I enter the great hall, vast in breadth, majestic in height, supported by massive towering pillars, each hewn from a single granite rock. Ah, it gladdens my heart to see the devotion of my family and priests. Even in my absence, they have kept the ghee lamps burning brightly, anticipating the Lord's descent. The entire chamber is immaculate, like a chaste young girl faithfully awaiting her husband's arrival. Ah, the Garuda Stamba, the tapered cylindrical column ascending towards the roof, a suitable mount for Tarksha's son, the Lord's indomitable carrier. My obeisance is unto you, O strong wind Garuda. In my absence, you have guarded well your master's house, keeping out all intruders. Uh, the sound of a ceremonial procession coming this way. Perhaps, perhaps my dear friend Vidyapati knew of my arrival. Some of the priest with his assistance. But how much he resembles my friend. By sparing even his appearance, I am reminded of Vidyapati. How strange. My obeisance is unto you, who are so dear to the Lord that he bears your footprint upon his divine chest. O oh, descendant of Bhrigu, tell me. In what ceremony are you engaged? Is it being conducted under the direction of that best of all Brahmins, Vidyapati? My name is Vishnu Sharma. I am the head priest presiding over the forthcoming deity installation. Your heroic appearance indicates you are a member of the Kshatriya caste. No doubt you have come to attend the grand installation ceremony. Please tell us who you may be. In truth, I feel as if I already know this hero. Is my appearance so altered that I cannot be recognized? Why, I am in the Dumna, king of Avantipura. I wonder whether it's related to the exalted king who built this temple. I feel an uncommon affection for him. Avanti is far to the west. You have indeed come a great distance. You must be tired after such a long journey. Has Maharaja Golomadabal been made aware of your presence so that he may receive you properly and arrange for your quarters? Does he speak to me or am I dreaming? Oh, noble one, please do not joke with me. Why should I joke with you, good sir? Are you so eager to take part in the installation ceremony? That will put aside all formalities of reception. Certainly I am eager. I live for nothing else. Then come along now, for you are proceeding to the sacrificial arena. Good Brahman. Yes? 
What is this ceremony you are going to perform? And you mentioned a king, Kalamadhav. But who has not heard of emperor's glories? After the demise of King Suradeva, whose jurisdiction extended to the limits of the earth, Maharaja Kalamadhava assumed the throne. Not, however, before the challenge horse he had sent throughout the world returned without a single contender. Does the emperor enjoys the support of all other kings, who regularly honor him with valuable tributes, and is as charitable and religious as they. Ah, witness this beautiful temple, about to be dedicated to the deity of Sri Madhava, prepared under his personal supervision. How can this be? Where is Vidyapati and brave Yudhavira? Please tell me what has become of them. Those revered souls out of the distant past. Distant past? I can assure you there is no Vidyapati here now. Well, with your permission, we shall proceed with our duties. Come. No! I cannot give my permission. Not at all. Out of respect for your position, I shall not challenge you personally. But as for your king, that is a different matter. By whose authority does he occupy this land? What to speak of this temple? As a Kshatriya, it is your duty to follow our directions, not obstruct us in the performance of our sacred duties. If the Emperor hears of this, your life is not safe. My life is protected by the Supreme Lord, by whose order I have built this temple. As long as I stand, I shall not permit the installation of any deity. Other than Sri Jagannath, Lord of the Universe, we must apprise Maharaja Golomadabu immediately of this. Uh, uh, I think we have forgotten some of the items needed for our worship. Uh, come, come, let us go. Yes. Oh, this is terrible. The king is so powerful, what can his purpose be? Now, I must inform Maharaja Golomadabu immediately. I must. What has happened here? With full confidence, I left the kingdom safe in the hands of Yudhavira, with Vidyapati to look after all priestly functions. But now, upon returning from the heavenly planets, I find no reception. Rather, it seems I am a foreigner in my own home. Vidyapati and Yudhavira, hallowed names only. Could it be that during my stay in the heavenly planets, Time has passed without my noticing. Otherwise, how could this temple come under another's control? I must be prepared, for who knows what may happen next. When returning from Satyalok, with Brahma's blessings, I was certain of success. But the present circumstances plunged me headlong into doubt. Yet... Yet I welcome this new challenge, this fire of ordeal. Let the difficulties increase. Yes, let their intensity magnify. For in the face of each new adversity, I see the Lord coming closer. Indeed, I feel his presence at every moment, as if he's standing by my side. Surely through his mercy I shall learn of my dear most friends. That's is the sweet redeemer for those who suffer in this world. Where is that stranger who questions my authority and dares defy this temple? Is this the visitor who disturbed your preparations for Sri Madhava's date installation? Yes, my lord. I am Gala Madhav, emperor of the world. Under my rule, all good men are welcome. But those who defy religious principles are severely chastised. You call yourself the king of Amante. But how can you be the descendant of the great king Indra if you plan to upset the sacred ceremony? I demand that you declare your intentions immediately. And if it is my authority you question, then I'm ready to put your doubts at rest. So quick to take offense and draw conclusions. Seems your temper has caused you to mistake friend for foe. Such hasty words do not befit one who calls himself an emperor. No 
know it then, that I am in the Dumna of Avanti, fifth in line from the creator Brahma, from whose planet I have just come. The Indra Dumna passed away ages ago. Do not try to deceive me. I assure you I am no imposter. This temple is under my charge and shall be the home only of Lord Jagannath, by whose order I had it built. It is not I who am the imposter, but enough of words. If need be, my sword will speak the truth with its sharp edge stung and reveal who wears the disguise. It is the crow who always perches near the temple. Like a mendicant beggar, he chants the name of Rama and lives simply on the prasadam offered by the visiting pilgrims. You have been saved by the holy name of Ram, which causes death to run in fear and burning wrath to be extinguished. You, Crow, why have you saved this thief? How dare you? Well, that's control this corpse could soon have been your next meal. I am the crow motion day. Yoga after yoga, I sit on the nearby sacred tree, chanting the divine name of Rama. All is known to me, for I have witnessed the events of millions of years. Since, Ram, since you Ram, take the name of Ram, Ram, your words must be true. Tell me then, who are these strangers and how dare they act as if this temple built by my efforts were their own? First, allow me to offer my most respectful obeisances unto you, mighty monarch, foremost among men and best of all devotees. Having built this temple, which has no equal, you have ascended with your earthly body to the planet of the immortals. Truly, you are to be worshipped by all men. Ram, <laughs> Ram, Ram, Ram. Where is my first Ram, real deception? Ram, How ironic. Ram, <laughs> Though Ram, usually the crow's going disturbs Ram, the peace. How sweetly this Ram, crow speaks. Yet mistakenly, Ram, these well-meaning Brahmins have greeted me with crow-like Ram, shrieks. O oh, Bhushundi, Ram. may Ram pour his blessings upon you. Ram. Now that I am home, I am impatient to greet those dear to me. Ram. Tell me, where is Vidyapati, best of the twice-born, and Vishwavasu, his father-in-law, who is so dear to the Lord, and the Queen, and Yudhavira? O oh, King, though it is hardly proper to offer sad tidings upon arrival, please prepare yourself. His words already Ram. seem to confirm my suspicions. Ram. And the present events give little hope. Ram. Please, remove all my doubts. I said I sit here, yoga after yoga. Yes, I have heard you. My dear king, you have been away for a very, very long time. Since you left, the passing months have turned to years, the years to lifetimes. Ah, Ram. Ram. I see. Ram. And it is Ram. as Lord Brahma said. Ram. Time moves impatiently in its destined course. Ram. Though my stay in Satyalok was not very long, Ram. by earthly calculations, ages have passed. Are they all gone? My family. Friends, subjects. Expecting your imminent return, Vidyapati had the sacrificial fire kept burning brightly in anticipation of Lord Jagannath's appearance. Years passed, and then some of the citizens began to speak ill of you, having lost faith that you would ever return. This pained Vidyapati deeply, and gradually... His hope too eroded. Yet, the heavy tears of his loving friendship continued to fuel the sacrificial fire like hot heat keeping it alive. Not until the very end, with his final breath, 
Let the sacred flame flicker and die. Ah, ah, Ram. Best friend, God. Ram. And devoted fish from a zoo. Painted upon the canvas of my mind. Where will I ever find such friends again? Who were like the elixir of joy to my eyes and a delight to my heart, and who shared equally with me in my pleasure and pain. Times of adversity proved their friendship true, unlike that of those. Who thirst for gain and praise one only in prosperity? Though I have gone to heaven, a step from Vaikunt, and though Brahma has blessed me that the Lord will surely come, without these dear friends, what welcome can I give? And with whom, <laughs> with whom shall I share Jagannath's darshan? My God. He is in Vadumna, the jewel of Kshatriya kings. O monarch, for failing to recognize you whose fame is universally known, we deserve to be condemned. You are luminous like the sun at high noon, and thus your sudden departure plunges the entire earth into a dreadful darkness of eclipse. In your continued absence, the seasons became an unending winter, and the temple you built hidden for lonely beneath layers of deep white sand, became like a Himalayan peak covered with snow. Hearing of your glorious temple, I excavated it with much difficulty and restored it to its original beauty. Now it's yours without question. O oh, Maharaja, I beg you to accept me along with all at my command to be used as you see fit. Though I can hardly compare with those dear to you in the past, Still, I stand ready to do as you bid. Please forgive the harsh words spoken at first, Maharaj. For real friends are like coconuts, outwardly rough, but sweet at heart. Maharaj, Maharaj, it is said that friendship between the wicked, like an earthen vessel, is easily broken and only with great difficulty repaired. But that friendship between the good is like a pot of gold, Difficult to break and easily restored. But as when we first met, I felt naturally inclined to offer you the accrued assets of my pious deeds. Now I understand the cause of my spontaneous affection. Lord Jagannath has already claimed this temple as his own and wishes us to serve him exclusively. We have already performed the ceremonies to invoke good fortune, two for the mother but eighty instead. But it was actually for Lord Jagannath that all the arrangements were made. Without our knowledge, the Lord has had us prepare for his advent. Will you not accept our help? Please, tolerate our rudeness. After all, in the absence of the father, the eldest son must overlook the indiscretions of his younger brothers for the sake of maintaining family unity and satisfying his father's wishes. I... 
am beyond insult. What is there left in this world worth striving for? Friends, family, they have all been taken. I wanted the benediction of being concerned only with worshipping the Lord. Now by his will that desire has been fulfilled. O oh, noble king, family and friends are like twinkling stars. The full moon lord can only illume the dark night. Maharaj, if you grant us your association, we too may bathe in those soothing moonbeams. Please let us serve the Lord. Is there no way we can help you hasten his appearance? Who am I to deny your request? Lord Jagannath's appearance has this special feature. None shall be barred from offering him their souls. He comes to deliver the most fallen. Therefore, I claim the right of first worship. But regarding his advent, there is nothing you can do. For it is by his sweet will alone that he will come. You can pray, however, for you are a Brahmin, and he may hear your prayers. As for myself, I shall withdraw my senses from all activity. Sitting upon a mat of sacred kusa grass, with its tips facing east, taking neither food nor water, I shall focus my mind and repose my heart at the Lord's lotus feet. Either Jagannath appears, or death will carry me to the Lord's eternal shelter. Now, please, I want to be alone. As you wish, Maharaj. In expectation of the Lord's appearance, I should be dressing myself in garments of rejoicing. Instead, I bear cruel fate's heavy cloak. My eyes, which should sparkle in happy anticipation, are blind, burning pools of tears. <laughs> My body, which should exhaust itself in intense preparation, twists now. Agonizing separation from those who were my dear most friends. Ah. Let me go outside. Perhaps the cool night air will relieve my feverish condition. Ah. It has begun to rain. The moon, shrouded in clouds, seems to cry hot tears. His shriveled, dull countenance reveals that he too is in mourning. Oh, noble brother, brilliant luminary of the nighttime sky, why do you cover your face in gloom? Restlessly you wander across the dark heavens firmament, passing sleepless nights in search of whom? Silently you move through the constellations' houses, bound on a lone journey you alone can fathom. Is it for some distant loved one, O oh brother of the night, that you pour forth such heartfelt tears? I too am in mourning and in desperation crying and my burning tears mix with yours and strike the earth with such force that they draw a cry of anguish from her depths and leave a stifling mist upon her face. Blessed earth, O oh Mother Bhumi, today you look especially radiant and satisfied at heart, for the Lord of the universe 
thrown upon the ocean's mighty waves, has arrived entrusted to your loving care. By choosing you as his mother, Lord Hari has ignored the prayers of all other planetary deities. Seeing in the Dumna fasting to death, Lord Jagannath appeared to him in a dream and reassured him the time for his advent had come. The Lord directed the king to Banki Muhan, where he would arrive as a great log floating on the ocean. Listen. Listen. The drums beating and the din of the crowd surpassed the ocean's mighty roar. Oh, mother, this sandy beach of Banki Muhan shall ever be renowned as the place. Lord Jagannath first rested after his long journey. Look, look, there lies that wondrous Lord. Ah, oh, this poor symbol of Lord Vishnu. In his self-manifest form, Lord Jagannath shall soon emerge. And the greatest of sinners shall gain liberation. I've seen the Lord only once. A sea of human bodies surges back and forth. It's thousands of wave-like arms trying to rescue the Lord from the sand. Lord is not mere wood to be moved by ordinary means or carved with mundane tools. The efforts of all these souls shall prove fruitless. I have come just in time to intercede on Indudumna's behalf. Words. As worthless as a quiver of headless arrows, set up in a bow of false spite. Imagine hundreds of my men whose strength has never before been checked now stand vanquished. Though their muscles rippled, glistening with sweat from their exertion, that log remained impervious to all their efforts at dislodging it. The best of my elephants. In a rotting, maddened state, I've become tamed to timidity. They rage exhausted in pulling and pushing. But that log, that log is as immovable as the mighty Himalayas. You did your best, Kalamatha, and your men performed admirably. Even Indra himself, with all the legions at his command, would have failed to move Lord Jagannath. I am not disappointed. For the Lord has his own will. It is no disgrace to be humbled by the Lord. Remember, you are not dealing with an ordinary log. This tree, like a hair of the Lord's transcendental body, is as absolute and all-powerful as the Supreme Lord himself. It is he who brings forth numberless universes, floats them in space, and effortlessly retracts them all within a single breath. He fills each universe with unlimited living entities, maintains them all as the super-soul within, and at last, as the fire of devastation, destroys all that is made of matter. Now, this Supreme Lord, the original Vishnu, the object of Shiva's meditation, sits incarnated before us, as a transcendental log. Just to show his mercy to the conditioned souls, he appears as the deity through a variety of mediums, earth, stone, jewels, metal, paint, even within the mind. May that supremely merciful Lord, who has come now as a wooden log, please manifest himself before us. Listen! Listen! What has happened? Maharaj! Maharaj! Lord Jagannath has moved! That's impossible! He has heard my prayers. Tell us! Even after we left, thousands of people remained behind. Standing despondent in the huge craters the playing elephants are made. They look like tiny ants milling about in helpless frustration. So then, Maharaj, suddenly from out of the crowd stepped a burly fellow, rough and dissembled. He quickly offered his obeisances to that sacred log of incalculable weight, and then proceeded to lift it up even as a child picks up a stick to play with. Vishnu Sharma, who was he? 
clouds are his wondrous speed, surpassing the efforts of your entire army. You hoisted the hero upon their shoulders. Oh, but what was his name? Did you not ask him? Yes. He is dancing with joy and holding him aloft. He shouted, Bina Vodra! Bina Vodra, King of the Sabara! What? King of the Sabaras? Oh, how wonderful! A swineherd? Oh. An ordinary Sabara would bring the best of my army. Maldivar is far from ordinary. Well, if he lives so near to my capital, why haven't I heard of him before? Well, fame smiles as easily upon the sinful as the pious. It is not a true sign of a man's real worth. To recognize virtue, you must study the heart. And I think this Sabara is quite up to the mark. <laughs> You speak as if you have met this man before, hmm? <laughs> yes, perhaps in a past life. In any event, his presence gives me hope. Let us go and congratulate him for doing what we found impossible. Follow me. I feel as though I've tread this path before. Long ago in a distant life, there were friends like you, a prayer the same, with only the goal of a different name. Though your body moves forward, your mind lags behind, anchored in the memory of bygone times. With one foot in the past, the other moving towards the future, who knows what the present may hold? Is it not a great mystery? Just consider with what seeming ease this Virabhadra lifted the log. Surely there is divine will involved here. Ah, we have come to the path's end. Uh, and there, there is the cloud. Still it's rising. And see there, that muscular man, he is Virabhadra. Ah, ah, not very awesome. A bit on the pocky side and a little oldish. <laughs> Don't you think so, Vishnu Shabai? <laughs> Must you always judge by appearance, Kolumadava? Why don't you see what he has accomplished? And besides, it is said, a natural friend obtained simply by good luck and sincerely affectionate will never forsake one, even in adversity. <laughs> well spoken, Vishnu Sharma. Have him brought over. Yes. Gods! Gods! Bring the Sabara in here! I believe... Your name is Virabhadra? Yes, my lord. It is. Mm -hmm. You deserve our congratulations. This is Maharaj Indradyumna, and I am your king, Galamadhav. This is a great honor for me. I have heard of you, King Indradyumna, ever since I was a small child. I hope I can serve you. For then my forefathers will be redeemed of the sins as Sabara must commit. Among all classes of men, the name Indradyumna is glorified. Tell us, Virabhadra, when Sabaras are by nature accustomed to keeping pigs and sworn to unclean habits, how is it that you were so interested in this sacred log? And what prompted you to come forth and lift it? Uh, it's, um... D don't be afraid uh, to reply to the Maharaj. Uh, it's really hard to explain. My whole family is always prayed to Vishnu. When I heard mm. how the log had been found, I, I wanted to see and then I came, and suddenly I felt as if Vishnu himself was calling me forward and, and telling me to lift him. Vishnu Sharma, hmm? I thought Sabaras worshipped ghosts and spirits. Hmm? I told you, he's not a common Sabara. Uh, Virbhadra, for how many generations has your family worshipped Vishnu? Uh, as long as I know of. And have they always lived in this village? No. Before our family dwelled in the forests of Niladri. Niladri? Maharaj, can I ask you a question? Yes. It said that one of my forefathers, uh, by the name Vishwavasu... Oh, what? You, but, uh, no, 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 my lord, please don't touch me. I'm condemned and unclean. You, you Sabara, keep away from the king. Vir Bhadra, I am King Indra Dumna of Avanti. Vishwavasu was more dear to me than my own brother. Ma Maharaj, he's an outcast. Stop, Kolumatapa, you are wrong. Devotion knows no such restrictions. <laughs> Reminded of Vishwasu, I forgot myself for a moment. Just see Jagannath's mercy. In the absence of Vishwasu, 
The Lord has sent you. I wish to speak alone with the Sabara. Yes, yes Maharaj. When one discovers an old family acquaintance, a little intimacy easily restores the bond. <laughs> you remind me so much of Vishwavasu. Though you're not so feisty, I hope. <laughs> no, Maharaj. This time, when day meets night, reflects my motley state of mind. The amber's setting sun casts its pale glimmer upon the grove whose trees trace dim shadows on the rippled sand like fingers reaching for the water's edge. The sun's heat lingers, baked within the white sands, a languid reminder of the day's feverish pace. But feel the cool as evening comes, the wind caressing the water's face, blows a fine spray that chills in the setting sun's golden rays. <sighs> How much I have yearned for Jagannath to appear. Yet the intensity of my longing continued even after his advent. Virabhadra, what cooling relief your association now brings, just as the night relieves the passion of the day. Let us sit down. Um, uh, it, it's not right that we sit on an equal level. Virabhadra, please give up this formal respect. Your forefather Vishwas, you even abused me with harsh words. <laughs> Yet I lament the loss of his exalted association. Please, do sit down. <laughs> Virabhadra, I'm eager to know why the Lord of the Universe chose you to lift him. Uh, Maharaj, we Sabaras are meant for such physical tasks. Do not try to cover your devotion by such humility. Either your strength surpasses that of all the armies on earth, or by your faith, Chagannath became lighter than air. Indeed, the Lord of the entire universe has allowed you to carry him as easily as a loving parent bears his small child in his arms. Bless me, Virabhadra. Bless me with one drop of your faith. Oh, no. Uh, I'm a swineherd and not a blesser of kings. Then bless me with your help. For we shall have to move the Lord from where he now lies. We must take him to Gundicha and have him carved. I shall have a covered platform built at the place where I first performed 1,000 Ashwamedha sacrifices. With your assistance, we shall lift the transcendental log upon a golden chariot and move him to Gundicha in a grand procession accompanied by Kirtan. <laughs> How relishable that moment will be. Oh, fortune, your nature is flirtatious, like a woman's enticing, with false promises of abiding faithfulness. The time has come. Give up your roaming and reside here everlastingly. Virabhadra, the tribulations I've endured, would others have stood so strong? At last I have reached the final threshold. Now nothing can keep me from the Lord. Come, let us join Galamadhav and the others. Yes, come. Come, yes, sir. Come. Govindam Adipurusham Tamaham Bhajami Good. They have met. Thus the wandering of all living beings is controlled by the Lord, who is situated in the core of the heart and knows everyone's desires. Material existence, like a mighty river, surges endlessly on, carrying all in a flood. Like weightless straws, the living beings are helplessly buffeted about, momentarily coming together, then quickly scattered apart. Yet, here are souls whose ultimate union cares for neither time nor tide and laughs at the ugly face of death. Their talks, their plans, their deeds shall ever endure. The time has no jurisdiction in the course of their lives. These are the Vaishnavas, Lord Hari's devoted servants, whom the river of time can never sweep away. I should at once go to Brahmalok and report to my father all that has transpired since the Lord's advent. 
गोविंदम आदि पुरुषम तमाहम भजामि Dear King, patience is certainly a quality worth cultivating. Consider the battlefield. In the formation known as Uddha Chandra, you allow the enemy to enter within, and then prevent him from retreating by sealing off the rear. The success of the tactic depends entirely on patience. You must allow the enemy to advance far enough. Dear King. You have given your solemn oath. How can you break it? Uh, the, the Brahmin Anand Morana promised to finish carving the deity within 21 days, on the condition that he may not be interrupted under any circumstances. There are still seven days remaining. I beg you, please be patient, Maharaj. It is said that adversity stands beside him who ignores the words of well wishers. <clears throat> Such a man is the delight of his enemies. Oh, it's not as if I've lost all control. I felt great joy to behold the many auspicious signs, though he could not see the work progressing. The continuous sound of the old craftsman's chisel was reassurance enough. What to speak of the celestial music and the parijata flowers that shot from above? Last I thought, I have finally arrived at the lotus feet of the Lord. Then suddenly, there was only silence. No music, no woodcutter's chisel, no shower of flowers. For three days I have remained patient, but there is only silence. <laughs> How long must I keep my composure when minute by minute doubts erode it? For only seven more days. Oh, blast this timid resignation! It may suit you or the likes of Golomadov, but I cannot profess serenity when Jagannath's welfare is in doubt. Did I hear my name? Hmm? <laughs> Spoken favorably, I suppose. What is the report? Are you coming from Gundicha? Certainly, Vishnu Sharma. I have spent the entire day there, but there is nothing new to tell. Oh, I see. Uh, Vishnu Sharma. Hmm? Uh, Our friend here looks quite disturbed. <coughs> yes, he is. Golomadhava. Hmm. Uh, uh, yes, Vishnu Sharma. Uh, as there are still seven days remaining, why not take Maharaja Indradumna on a short tour of the province? Oh, well, that's an excellent idea, Vishnu Sharma. Uh, uh, how does it appeal to you, my friend? Not at all. Rather, it makes me fear that we've come under some evil spell. When we should be alert to any danger, you counsel a sightseeing tour. What is there to see when my eyes are hungry for a single vision only? But what more can we do? According to Anand Maharana's direction, three chariots have been prepared and have personally supervised the complete cleansing of the temple. Everything is ready. Why all this unnecessary agitation? I tell you, once before I hesitated, and I forever regret it. By not going personally to Niladri, oh. I lost the darshan of Lord Neel Madhav. In all good conscience, I cannot advise him deserving honor to Maharana. Remember, all other carpenters tried to carve the log, but their tools simply broke to pieces. <laughs> Fortunately for us, this old Brahmin suddenly appeared. Though he has walked behind closed doors, we saw the demigods express their approval by showering flowers as the carving went on. Maharaj, Maharaj, if you break your promise to a Brahmin, then may the Lord protect me. I cannot bear this waiting any longer. Call Madhav. Call me the Patra. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj. Be the Patra. My hankering to see Lord Jagannath has broken the chains of constraint. No argument can dissuade me. Be the Patra. Be the Patra. Both Vishnu Sharma and Gaul Madhav counsel waiting. You understand my feelings better than they. I propose to break open the doors of Kundicha. Now tell me, what is your opinion? Uh, oh, King, Jagannath has appeared in answer to your prayers. He knows your heart, and you know his. 
Is your mind made up? It is. Then what more can be said? Then we go. Then at least let me go ahead and alert the others. Uh, there is Vishnu Sharma. Yes. Maharaj. Maharaj, think carefully. You can still change your mind. Maharaj. Never before have I seen such forms. Maharaj, Maharaj, is this the vision of your dream? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. I feel like a blind man seen for the first time. In my dream, the Lord was seated with Anantadeva to his right, and Lakshmi Devi on his left. This must be Jagannath. See the engraved marks of the conch shell and disc. And this must be Sri Baladeva, the first expansion of the Lord. With Ananta holding his seven hoods like an umbrella above the Lord's head. See, Sri Baladeva has the markings of a club and plough. Jagannath, Baladeva, and this must be the Lord's sister, Shubhadra Devi. Hmm. Uh, but I could never have imagined they would look this way. The carving is not yet completed. See how roughly they are cut. Yes. Uh, th they must be painted. Jagunath should be black, Shuvadra saffron, Baladeva white, and Sudarshan red. After painting and decorating them, we shall dress the deities very gorgeously in pure white silk. No, no, yes. no. There is no question of painting until the carving is complete. Where is that Brahman Anant Maharana? Uh, he, he seems to have disappeared. Oh. It is also amazing. But he must return. Look. Vishnu Sharma, look! Hmm? There are no feet or hands. That I've already observed, Maharaj. Oh, what has happened? What has happened? Where is Anant Maharana? I am afraid it is all too clear. The conditions set by the Brahmin craftsman, or whoever he was, have been violated. Uh, by forcibly opening these doors before the 21 days had passed, he interrupted the carving before he could complete the Lord's hands and feet. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? Can there be anything worse? When I have waited so long, shall it end this way? Is my life such a failure? Throughout the universe, everyone is depending on me. Lord Brahma himself and my Guru Sri Narad. They will be so disturbed that I have interrupted the carving. How shall I live knowing of their disappointment? Better to give up this useless life. I am a wretched offender. Oh, Let the world be rid of my sight. Oh, oh, Noble king, console yourself. Whatever happens is by the Lord's will. You have acted out of love, so there can be no wrong. Maharaj. Your devotion to Jagannath is perfect. Please, please don't torment yourself in this way. Let the deities be painted and dressed this very night. They will attain an altogether new appearance which shall satisfy everyone. It's late. Let the Brahmins do their work. Yes, my lad. Try to take some rest and by morning you will feel quite different. Rest. If fate were not so unkind to me, you would let me die at once. You go back to the palace, but I will not, for I expect no sleep this night. Let me remain here within the temple. Yes, Maharaj. Come. Come, Lord Maharaj. Tonight, I shall end my life. I have disobeyed the Brahman, offended my guru, and disfigured the Lord's transcendental form. No one could be more condemnable. Dearest devotee, 
I am Jagannath, eternally present as Purushottama in this wooden form. I have appeared in this way to fulfill the very promise that though I am without hands and feet, I accept my devotees' offerings and walk about to bestow my blessings upon the people of this earth. I have especially enjoyed this sweet pastime in which you broke your promise to me. Devotees who have achieved the highest degree of love see me as Shyamasundara, the original personality of Godhead holding a flute. Still, if you prefer to worship me in opulence, you may ornament me with hands and feet made of gold and silver. But you should know that I am already the ornament of all ornaments. Odindam Adipurusham Tamaham Bhajami Gurudev did you hear? I had come to explain Jagannath's appearance, but by his direct mercy, the Lord himself has already done that. Oh, Master, this night was to be my last. Fearing I had offended you, I would have taken my life. My dear child, now you understand the mystery of the woodcarver's disappearance. The Lord has played this trick. Just increase your love for him. Otherwise, how is it possible that you, the emblem of perseverance, could have lost your patience and broken your word? Then the Brahman Anantmarana was Vishwakarma, the master architect of the demigods. The appearance of the Supreme Lord as Jagannath fulfills the eternal promise of the Vedas. Those who are envious of the Lord's personal opulences unscrupulously interpret the Vedic statement that the absolute truth is without hands and feet to mean that God is ultimately impersonal. But these words only mean that he has no material hands and feet. Thus Lord Jagannath demonstrates the true purpose of the Vedas, defeating the non-believers and impersonalists alike who deny his eternal personality. Jagannath has the greatest love for you. My child, be assured of this. The form he has manifested is eternal, not an accidental creation. And, and I thought him crude and unfinished. Rather, it was my crude heart that corrupted my vision and made me see the Lord, the complete and perfect person, as incomplete. Indradamna, I shall tell you a still more confidential reason for Lord Jagannath's appearance. Once, while visiting Dwarka, I beheld the Lord assume this very same feature. Some of the ladies there were discussing the Lord's Vrindavan pastimes. They had posted Subhadra to guard the door, fearing their talks if overheard by the Lord would cause him intense pains of separation. But seeing his sister standing guard only increased his curiosity, and the Lord began to listen through the door. When he heard of his pastimes with his beloved devotees of Vrindavan, he became stunned, lost in feelings of separation. His eyes opened wide, and he withdrew his hands and legs within his body, appearing just like the form of Lord Jagannath. Balaram, his elder brother, appeared at that time, and he too began listening to the pastimes of Vrindavan. Soon both he and Subhadra, who stood between the two brothers, became overwhelmed with ecstatic feelings, manifesting the same symptoms of intense separation. I was fortunate to be present at that moment, astonished by the transformation the Lord had undergone out of love for his devotees. I prayed that he bless the world by revealing himself in this most striking feature of ecstasy. Fast approaching is the auspicious time when the Lord should be greeted in Rudumna. Go quickly in and call the others. Brahma Murta has arrived. Guru 
Gurudev, here is King Golamadhav and Vishnu Sharma, the head priest, with their assistance. And lastly, the best of devotees, Veer Bhatra. May Jagannath bless you all for having rendered personal assistance to Maharaj in the Dhamma. Have you informed him of Lord Jagannath's words? He has. All his misgivings are now dispelled. That is the mercy of my Gurudev and Lord Jagannath. They have banished all doubts. He is seated on a golden plane carried by hundreds of white swans. The gods of the sun and moon stand reverently on each side. There are Brahmashya singing his glories, Apsharas dancing, and Gandharvas playing heavenly music. Precisely at Brahma Muhurta. May Lord Jagannath shower his blessings upon all of you. True to my word, I have come to perform the sacred installation of the Lord. Where is Maharaj Indradumna? At your service. On behalf of all the saints, universal controllers, and others under my charge, I thank you. It is difficult for me to reward you sufficiently for all that you have done. For it is because of your unswerving devotion that Lord Jagannath has come to remain in this universe for the entire duration of my life. Narad, are the chariots decorated with festive banners, charmers and lavish coverings of flowers? Yes, dear father. Are the brahmanas, khatriyas, vaishyas and shudras ready with all the paraphernalia necessary for worship and are all the devotees holding the ropes in their hands waiting to pull the chariots upon which the Lord will sit everyone is in readiness by dint of my spiritual vision I can see all the inhabitants of the seven worlds Descending from outer space to attend the installation ceremony of Lord Jagannath. My dear Indudumna, your good fortune knows no limits. Are you fully prepared? Everything is auspiciously arranged, my lord. Then we are ready. Call Bishavashu, the servant of Neil Madhav and your priest, Vidyapati, to carry the deities. My Lord, if only I... if only I could... Chai, why do you hesitate? Do you not see them? I see them always, but only in the core of my broken heart. Child, those mortal eyes are of no use... Now may your eyes see and your heart be mended. By the spiritual water of my Kamandalu, let your vision be anointed. Theapati, this is you after all. What? Indradumna, is this really you or a vision of my dreams? Oh, if we are dreaming, then let our arms entwine. Just mixed together. My friend, my friend, you cannot know the pain your absence caused. How much I suffered to hear the doubts of others. Never would I have forsaken our sacred mission. This is, this is certainly most bewildering. Have we been brought together in some other world, Mark? Yes, yes, some other world. For here, Lord Jagannath, Lord of the universe, reigns supreme. What? You, the villain, here as well? 
and now he's still on earth. Yudhvira, I should have known all along. Will you not greet me? My lord, my lord, is it you? Only apparition come to plague me in hell that those who fail in duty are sent. Oh, most loyal friend, no. Duty shall never be dishonored in your presence. And, and what are these royal vestments? Is this some strange shard? They are the just reward for all your noble deeds. My father-in-law, Vishwasu alive! Dear father, Father, see, Indra has returned. He has kept his word. Uh, how can this be? How can this be? Am I again in this world? Ah, wretched fate. When I perished in the forest fire, why didn't you return me to Nila Mother? Why? <laughs> My friend, you will soon see fate's true face. Once I too thought fate was cruel. I know him now as the Lord's own tool to forge by the fire of hard ordeal our unalloyed devotional zeal. Where is the Lord of your promise? Tell me where! For so long I waited till at last I had nothing left to offer but my final breath. Vishwasu, Jagannath has come. <sighs> Do you hear? He has come and he will never leave again. Ah, Lolita. Lolita, go offer your respects to your father. Lolita? Why do you call me Lolita? Do you think me the daughter of the Sabara? Oh, oh my beloved husband. Have I died and come to heaven? No, my dear. It is more than heaven. It is the kingdom of God. Lolita, see, your father is here as well. My father? Oh, oh, oh father, Lolita. can it be you? Lolita! It is. Lolita. Oh, oh, father. Where are we? Where are we and what does this all mean? Oh, dear king, if you are ever pleased, please make it all clear. My dearest friends, everyone... Please compose yourselves. Look, Lord Brahma and Narad Muni are standing beside us, casting upon us smiles of benediction. And it is they who have made all this happen. My dear devotees, by the grace of Lord Brahma, you now have divine vision, so you may be simultaneously conscious of past and present. While King Indradumna stayed under my father's planet, ages passed during which each of you gave up your bodies. But though your bodies changed, your consciousness did not, because consciousness is carried along with the transmigrating soul. And because you are all eternal servants of the Lord, there is no question of you ever having been disconnected from Him or each other. These eternal relationships can never be lost, even after giving up the body. My friends, dismiss all your doubts. Let go of all your heartfelt sorrows and rejoice once and for all. For behind these doors stands the object of each of our lives' long search. Gurudev, may the doors be opened. Yes, now is the proper time. This form of Jagannath removes the pain of long separation. His eyes seem to drink in the universe. His smile spreads benedicted bliss into the inner recesses of the heart. Has anyone ever beheld such a form? How can we calculate our debt to Indradumna? By his constant endeavors, he has made the unlimited nectar ocean of Jagannath's sweet beauty available to the whole world. Anyone who tastes even one drop of that nectar with his eyes will become permanently intoxicated 
with love of God. Here is the Lord of the universe who has redeemed our lives. O oh Lord, here we are, your eternal devotees, together at last. O oh Jagannath, beholding your shining moon face with large lotus eyes, your dazzling streaks of tilak, which flash like lightning upon your forehead and your effulgent body, whose beauty surpasses the bluish autumn sky. I think that were I granted a life as long as Lord Brahma's, I still could not drink in the full beauty of your ovation. My friend, is this not the same Lord Neil Madhav whom you once worshipped with such great affection? Yes. Yes. The very same master and dear friend of my life. If only you'd let me serve him, then I'd make a costly paste of mala and sandal part, mixed with cooling camphor and mask, and massage him with it early in the morning, and he'd be unlimitedly pleased. His eyes would partially close, like two pink lotuses whose delicate petals have not yet beheld the sun and his face would resemble a fully bloomed blackish lotus. Out of his deep satisfaction, tears would rain from his lotus eyes like drops of dew, a shower of translucent jewels falling upon his black lotus face. Who but you could have such vision? So, Vidyapati, you have brought me to Neil Madhav after all. Did you ever doubt I would? Though our lives were separated by time, our friendship endured. Just as when a lotus stalk is broken, the fiber remains intact. Are you satisfied, Narada? Is your mission accomplished? Yes, finally. Just see the ecstasy of these devotees. Though Sri Jagannath's installation has not yet officially begun, they are already bathing the Lord with their tears of joy. Then let their bliss increase a thousandfold. Listen, dear children, to the boons Lord Jagannath has given. Vidyapati and his descendants shall be known as Suyas. They shall serve as the Lord's pujaris. And Vishavashu and his descendants shall perform personal services for him throughout future millennia, because they shall carry Lord Jagannath to his processional chariot. They will be known as his Daitas. And what about Indra Dumna? There is no expressing Lord Jagannath's pleasure concerning him. Whatever he wishes shall be fulfilled. Then I shall ask Lord Jagannath to grant this wish. May his doors be closed for only three hours every morning. May they remain open the rest of the day so that all people can behold him. Throughout the day we shall offer him so much food that his hands will never be dry from eating. So be it. But please take one boon for yourself. Yes. That I may never have any descendants so that no one will ever claim this temple as his own. O king, your selfless devotion shall be remembered throughout the ages. Look, Indradeva, king of the demigods, has arrived. With his beautiful wife, Sachi. <sighs> Surya Dev, the sun god, has come with his chaste wife, Sangya. <sighs> and Chandra, the lord of the moon, has arrived. <sighs> by his wife, Rohini. <sighs> <sighs> they are all taking up the ropes to personally pull the lord on his chariot. Yamaraj, Agni Dev, and Kuvera have also arrived with their wives. Lord Jagannath's presence has made Niladri the most auspicious place in the entire universe. Now in the Dumna. So dear to the heart of Lord Jagannath, 
Is there anything further I can do for you? My lord, dear Narad Rishi, what should I say? With the lord of the universe beaming joyously upon us, with Vidyapati and Vishwavasu waiting to fulfill your father's order, with all my best friends and servants standing around me, and with you, my divine master, looking always to my well-being, what more could I possibly desire? Only this. May those who take prasadam, the remnants of the Lord, who hear his glories chanted by the pure devotees, or who behold these three chariots as they ply along the road, be they pious or most sinful, let it matter not at all. May they receive the benedictions of this all-compassionate Lord. Now, in the Dumna, as everything is ready, I request you and your friends to carry Lord Jagannath, Lord Baladev, and Shubhadra Devi to their processional chariots, so we may begin their grand installation. My Lord, whatever you have ordered shall be done. Now, without a moment's further delay, let us carry the Lord upon his chariot and perform his grand installation. Amen. Mm -hmm. 